For our next question, we're asked to factor each of the following. And we notice that what we have here are trinomials, which are, in a sense, in a friendly format because there's a variable of degree 2 in the first term, degree 1, and degree 0. However, what we notice right away is that the leading coefficient is not 1. The sum and product method that we learned earlier works when the leading coefficient is a 1. Well, what we need to do here in each of these cases is to try to common factor out that coefficient and hopefully it'll common factor out of every term in each case and then we'll be able to use the sum and product method. If you're a little confused, well, let's take a look at the first question. The first question, 3x squared plus 18x plus 27. Okay, well, we notice that we have degree 2, degree 1, and degree 0. But unfortunately, our leading coefficient is a 3. Well, what we can sometimes do is see if this 3 will factor out of each term. 3 definitely factors out of 3x squared. 3x squared divided by 3 is just x squared. Definitely factors out of positive 18x because positive 18x divided by 3 is simply positive 6x. And it factors out of positive 27 because positive 27 divided by 3 is positive 9. So what we do, we factor that 3 out and we're left inside the bracket with x squared plus 6x plus 9. Now, What's convenient about this is we can quickly double check to see if we got the right answer by distributing that 3 in our heads or on a scrap piece of paper into the bracket to see if in each case we get the term that we should have gotten. And in this case we see it works. Well, we now focus our attention on the bracket, x squared plus 6x plus 9. Using the sum and product method we want two numbers that add up to 6 but multiply to 9. Well, those two numbers are actually one number, 3 and 3, sum of 6, product of 9. We see that 3 plus 3 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, so we have to carry this number 3 along. We can't just let it go. I think of it as a passenger. So it's still there, but then inside this bracket becomes x plus 3 quantity times x plus 3 quantity. Okay, we move on to our next question. Oh, and sorry, and we can also express that if we choose as 3 times x plus 3 quantity squared. We move on to the next question. We have negative 2x squared plus 10x minus 12. Well, we're going to factor out a negative 2 from each term because we see that we have even numbers as coefficients, so it'll work. But re remember that when you factor a negative 2 out, every term from which you factored that negative number out changes its sign. So factoring a negative 2 out leaves us with positive x squared minus 5x plus 6. And we now want two numbers that add up to negative 5 and multiply to positive 6. Well, we're going to look for two negative numbers because two negative numbers have the capacity to add to a, to multiply to a positive but add to a negative. Well, those two numbers with a sum of negative 5 and a product of 6 are negative 2 and negative 3. But don't forget we carry along that negative 2 in front of the bracket as a passenger and we get our final answer negative 2 times quantity x minus 2 times quantity x minus 3. Okay, moving to our next question, letter C, we get 4x squared plus 4x minus 288. It's a pretty big number on the end, but it is divisible by 4, so we can factor 4 out of each of the three terms. We get 4 times x squared plus x minus 72. So we want two numbers that add to 1 and multiply to negative 72. We're definitely looking for a positive and negative number. Well, those two numbers are positive 9 and negative 8. So we still remember to carry the 4 along. And we get 4 times x plus 9 quantity times x minus 8 quantity. Our final question, letter D, negative x squared plus x plus 2. Sometimes questions with the smallest numbers seem to give the most difficulty. Well, this negative sign in front is equivalent to saying that this first term has a leading coefficient of negative 1. We're going to factor negative 1 from each of these terms 
What that's going to do is it's going to change the sign of each of the terms. So this becomes negative 1 times x squared minus x minus 2. It's a little awkward to see perhaps, but think about it. Negative 1 times x squared is negative x squared. Negative 1 times negative x is plus x. Negative 1 times negative 2 is plus 2. So we have x squared minus x minus 2. Now we want two numbers with a sum of negative 1 and a product of negative 2. Those two numbers are negative 2 and positive 1. So again, making sure to carry along our negative 1, which is in front of the bracket, we get negative 1, which can be expressed as a negative sign, times x minus 2 times x plus 1.